Alyssa Broadbent, our Laurentian Leadership Center intern, interviews Jeremy Vanderhoek, a former Youth Ambassador of Reconciliation, on his study of Bill C-262, which was intended to implement the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples in Canada. First question is, can you introduce yourself and then tell us a little bit about your master's work addressing UNDRIP and Bill C-262? Yeah, so my name is Jeremy Vanderhoek. I've been a member of the CRC for my whole life. Um, I recently was the Youth Ambassador for Reconciliation with the Indigenous Ministries Committee. Uh, my master's work, so I just completed my coursework and my major research paper for a global governance degree at the Balsillie School, which is affiliated with the University of Waterloo. Um, so the MRP was based on Bill C-262, and I kind of came up at it from the frame of um, asking why it failed and how it failed. And my first investigation brought me to the Senate committee that killed the bill um, because they couldn't complete the process of, of getting it to royal assent before Parliament was disbanded for the next election. So I was kind of investigating that meeting specifically, which involved a couple of senators filibustering to the point where the meeting ended and they couldn't vote on it. And so I kind of reflected on what the motivations for that delay was and how it happened. And I came to the conclusion that it seemed more a problem with the institutions of Canadian government than it was a problem with the um, specific malicious actors in, in any in any bill or in any circumstance we're going to have political disagreement but for that to block a bill in the way it did with bill c262 uh, to the extent that a majority of the house of commons a majority of the senate a majority of the committee that dealt with this was in favor of the bill and yet the bill didn't pass because of a filibuster um, that felt like a problem with the institutions so i kind of explored how Canadian Senate rules and Canadian parliamentary rules lead to a bureaucracy that ironically promotes the idea that Canadian institutions are superior to Indigenous institutions. And so that was the framing of the MRP and I kind of, the end of that was looking hopefully towards the government introducing their own bill to implement on DRIP as they have done or they're beginning to do with C-15. Um, but lamenting that that couldn't happen with Bell C-262. So the next question, you kind of touched on it a little bit, but what is the relationship between Bill C-15 and Bill C-262? And what is their relationship to UNDRIP for anyone who might not be clear on that? Yeah, sure. So Bill C-262 was a private member's bill that was drafted by an Indigenous NDP MP um, that basically the goal of the bill was to align Canada's laws with the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People or UNDRIP. And that bill failed in the House of Commons or in the Senate, I should say, and um, did not become law because as I said, bureaucracy. Um, the most, the relationship between Bill C-262 and Bill C-15 was, um, C-262 is a private member's bill or was a private member's bill, meaning it was originated outside of the government. And Bill C-15 has originated in the, within the government. And I think the bills have some very similar aims to bring to align Canadian law with the UNDRIP, but secure the bill is more secure being a government bill in that it's more likely to be able to sustain throughout the legislative process. Um, so next question, why is Bill C-15 important to you and also specifically important to you as a Christian? Yeah, so C-15 is really important to me because I think it is one of the fundamental ways that we can reconcile our current legal system with one that promotes justice for Indigenous peoples as they have implemented it themselves. Um, UNDRIP has dates back to an era in the 70s where indigenous people were, were beginning to engage with the United Nations international system and were advocating on their for their own rights in a more formal capacity because they were denied that in the 30s when a Six Nations chief attempted to advocate for themselves at the United Nations or at the League of Nations, I should say, and were rejected. So UNDRIP is formalizing a, a rights document that 
uh, is indigenous written and indigenous created. And it's really important for me that in implementing indigenous rights, we are not implementing what we think they are, but what we are told they are from indigenous peoples as a way of reconciling um, the diminishment of historic sovereignty that existed before contact. Um, and it's important for me as a Christian because I think we're called as Christians to live in ways that resist empire. And I think that the Canadian relationship with the indigenous peoples has been a history of imperialism and colonialism and that has tragically cost not just strife, but deaths and pain and suffering for indigenous peoples based on a theory of race that meant white evangelicals were superior to indigenous peoples. And I think reversing that is the mission of Christ. How do you think Bill C-15 could impact Canadians if passed? Um, whether they're Indigenous, non-Indigenous, um, Christians? Mm. Yeah, so I think the biggest impact will be in the courts. Um, I think giving judges a bill, a legislative bill that they can, um, or a law, I should say, after receiving royal assent, that they can look to in order to implement free prior and informed consent as one of the core um, um, elements of our legal institutions, as opposed to the duty to consult. I think that'll be the biggest one. And I think more broadly, it'll give Canadians an opportunity to look to their own legal system with pride and with some respect for decency and common humanity. And, and as a participant in an international community that have recognized these rights as well. So um, I think for Christians, it's an opportunity to read the UNDRIP again and again and again, as it becomes part of our legislation and to recognize that when we are called in the call to actions of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, that Christians especially are called to be aware of what their civic institutions are doing and how they are operating as we are the um, people they respond to, right? So that's, that's how I see a Christian's role in recognizing under it. So what do you think are some of the common misconceptions about um, Bill C-15 and how would you respond to those concerned? I think some of the misconceptions come from this idea that we need to hoard our power in order to maintain stability. And I think that that is a fundamental mistake in that when power is diffused and shared, that community and humanity thrive. Um, I don't see misconceptions coming out of ignorance, but out of fear. I see it, the fear of losing what we once had, the control we once had over Indigenous peoples, over Indigenous industry. And I think getting around that takes a real reconciliation within yourself of your need for power and control over Indigenous peoples. And the last question is, what do you think Christians can or should do to support the passage of Bill C-15 and its implementation? Yeah, so I think it depends where you are on your journey of understanding in these issues. I think first steps require learning and then learning again and then making mistakes and learning again. That has been a core part of my development of understanding these issues is continuing to read. I think paying attention is something that we need to do more and more in the Canadian civic sphere where we are very obsessed with a certain somebody in the country south of us. And we often neglect recognizing where our own civic institutions are failing us. And so paying attention to how this bill goes forward and where it lands up and if it becomes law, the implementation process is so fundamental. And then being in dialogue with our elected officials where we have the freedom and opportunity to contact them when we are displeased and doing that when the votes come up and as the implementation processes continue and as hopefully annual reports on implementation are released.